So I came across a video by a lady called Claire Ridgway, who's a full-time author, researcher and historian, um, who's written multiple books on Anne Boleyn. And uh, she has a YouTube channel um, called The Anne Boleyn Files and the Tudor Society. Now, she, in this video, um, addresses Greg Hallett's claims uh, to be the rightful King of England. And also the fact that uh, Greg claims that Anne Boleyn survived her execution. I went on to have uh, children, um, her grandson being in Greg Hallett's story, Walter Raleigh, who uh, later on, way down the line, apparently um, Greg Hallett is connected to, which is why he claims that he has the Sangreal or royal blood lineage and rightful claim to the throne. So I thought it would be fun to uh, review this video and um, make some reactions to it. So here we go. Now today I'm answering the question, did Anne Boleyn actually survive her execution in 1536? And does the UK have a new monarch because of it? Now, for those of you who just want short and straight answers, I'll just say no and no. There you have it. For those of you wanting slightly longer answers, no poppycock, no absolute rubbish. There you go. <laughs> Brilliant. And for those of you wanting to know what on earth I'm talking about, keep on listening. Now, I've been receiving quite a few comments, messages and emails regarding a man named Joseph Gregory Hallett, who has proclaimed himself the UK's true monarch, King John III. According to the emails and comments that I've been receiving, the Pope has recognised him as King and the Queen has gone into hiding and Prince William has actually abdicated in favour of Greg Hallett, as he calls himself. Now, this is not new. He's been around for a while and I came across him a few years ago. But Greg Hallett has re-emerged and he's renewed his claim to the throne. In the past, I've just ignored Hallett and his claims and the emails that I've received. I definitely don't blame you there, Claire. Um, and I must say that I've been ignoring actually all of the YouTube comments that I've had recently about him on my videos, as I really, really didn't want to give him any airtime and rise to this bait. But really, enough's enough. And it makes a good question, uh, a good video to answer this question. So I'm going to address his claims in this video as they relate to Anne Boleyn. And then I'm just going to move on and forget all about him. So what am I going on about? What is Hallett claiming? What is all this about? Well, I won't get into the religious predictions, the holy grail stuff, the book of predictions mumbo jumbo. And that's actually um, a very polite, that's the most polite term I can think of to describe all the stuff on his website that is about those topics. <laughs> That was a very polite way of putting it. Um, I do wonder what your actual thoughts are, what you'd actually like to say. I couldn't make head or tail of it. It was just, yes, mad. Um, I'm going to focus on the bits surrounding my favourite Tudor personality, who is, of course, Queen Anne Boleyn, and how Greg Hallett claims to descend from her and be the rightful King of England. In a document on his website, and his website is a rabbit hole of completely bizarre stuff. He has a scan of what he describes as a certified declaration of Queen Anne Boleyn's royal lineage in Joseph Gregory Hallett, which he appears by its front page, he lists who he sent it to. He appears to have sent it to various members of the royal family, lots and lots of them. The Archbishop of Canterbury, the Pope and several world leaders, including Boris Johnson, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. And this document, um, which is scanned and put on his website, is stamped Common Law Courts Great Britain and also Prince Regent Duke Governor Joseph Gregory Hallett. 
In this huge document, and it is absolutely pages long, and by the time I'd read it, it really made me want to prick out my own eyes. <laughs> yep, yeah, I can uh, I can relate to that uh, absolutely. After reading these documents, I definitely um, I definitely can relate to that feeling there. He writes the following, that Queen Anne Boleyn ruled 1532-1533 to 1536. Well, she didn't rule, she was a queen consort. Her husband was the monarch, so that's wrong for a start. That she was the highest queen of England possible. Uh, no, she was a queen consort, not a queen regnant and not the highest queen. That she avoided her execution. Well, that got me rather puzzled. Uh, it was witnessed. Her ladies dealt with her very dead remains and took them to the chapel for burial. <laughs> very dead remains. Uh, that is funny. Um, you see, this is what I've been saying. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Not to mention that her death was witnessed and there seems to be no record of her survival of this. Greg does actually state in his documents that after Anne Boleyn avoided, avoided her execution um, that a committee awarded her um, to be queen in her own right. Um, but again, there's no evidence and proof of this. There's no evidence and proof or proof uh, that Greg has provided or anywhere that um, Anne Boleyn survived her death and went on to, um, to be grandmother of Walter Raleigh. It's just as far as I can see and anyone else can see, and obviously this historian can see, it's nonsense. Uh, but no, according to Hallett, she lived to breed again, reinvigorating the Royal Holy Grail lineage. Now I'm thinking Da Vinci Code. You know, it's got me really thinking that because he talks about the Sun Real as well. Yes, mm, Da Vinci Code-esque. And according to Hallett's documents, Anne, her relatives and friends, many of whom also faked their executions, were granted 94% of England to occupy, and he calls it the island. Now, Henry VIII may not have noticed all this because apparently he was mad. His jousting accident in 1536 had driven him mad. He was mad for the rest of his reign. But you'd think that someone else would have noticed Anne being alive and actually living in 94% of England. Uh, but then perhaps the English people were all mad or Anne was putting something in their drinks. Then, according to Hallett, her grandson became Sir Walter Raleigh and was born with the title Christ and earned the title Christ in July 1596 and again 1609 to 10. Here's a quote, creating the legitimate, independent, posthumous, royal, holy grail lineage. And obviously Hallett claims to descend from that line from uh, Sir Walter Raleigh and Anne Boleyn. So as I said, Greg provides no evidence uh, to support this claim. Um, and, you know, I actually go through this, um, through his old story of his lineage, uh, the, the story that he puts in his documents about his lineage, and I kind of pull it apart in my video, Lineage Lies. Uh, so if you, ha if you haven't seen my video, Lineage Lies, I'll leave a link below. Um, yeah, please watch it. Because um, also in that video, I look at his actual ancestry backed by birth certificates, official censuses, um, and ancestry.com. Um, provided by his family um, and you can see his actual uh, ancestry uh, as well as pull me pulling apart um, all of the uh, claims he makes in his documents on his lineage um, which have no basis of truth, have no evidence or proof and that Greg uh, won't provide. So, so something defi definitely fishy is going on with that story. Um, and also Hallett talks of um, pulling the sword from the stone, joining kingdoms and time, and that he's the fulfillment of predictions and a prophecy come true. Can you see why I wanted to prick out my eyes yet? I was constantly snorting coffee onto my laptop screen reading his claims. And I'm not being rude here. I don't want to be... Um, rude about this man but they are just so outlandish and crazy <laughs> uh, 
uh, not being rude at all. Uh, this lady is funny. Then he states that Anne Boleyn carried the titles Roman Emperor and Pontifex Maximus from Rome and France to England, providing enough leverage to end the papal vassal state, reclaim a quarter of the land of England, develop and publish the first complete Old Testament and New Testament Bible in English, and establish the Church of England. Dot, 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 lots more mumbo jumbo. I really don't know where to start with all of this. I love Anne Boleyn. She's my favourite historical personality and I do believe she played a role in the English Reformation and that she was a patron of religious reformers. She supported the dissemination of the Bible in English. She was a well, she was an evangelical. I wouldn't go so far as to call her a Protestant, but she was an evangelical, wanted reform of the church. But this is all such rubbish, what is in this document, and I hate that her name is being brought into it like this. But who am I to question this when, according to Hallett and his documents, the royal family, Archbishop of Canterbury, and everyone important all accept his claims. So I must be the one who's stupid. Huh. Even if Anne Boleyn could have survived her execution and bred again, as he calls it, having a child whose son was Sir Walter Raleigh, how does that have anything to do with a claim to the throne? Anne was not the monarch. She was not a queen regnant. She was just the wife of a monarch. She was a queen consort. So that doesn't make sense and Hallett really doesn't explain that. Not to mention you're not even related to Anne Boleyn, Greg. And also, how does that have anything to do with our present Queen's claim, uh, with Elizabeth II? Well, it doesn't at all. And other outlandish claims on his website, just to put his claims regarding Anne Boleyn into some kind of context, include that King Juan Carlos of Spain is Prince William's real father, untrue, that Grace Kelly, of course, who married Prince Rainier of Monaco, uh, Grace Kelly, the actress, was executed by her former lesbian lover, Queen Elizabeth II. Untrue, she died as a result of a car accident. Then I'm going to quote here because I don't quite know how to put this into my own words. The coins of the United Kingdom spell Elizabeth to Greg over 11,011 days, which spells mom, M-O-M, which renders a son. No, nope, I don't understand that one either, so I can't put that into my own, own words and, and try and explain it to you. Then we have Queen Elizabeth II, our present queen, wasn't George VI's daughter, but was actually conceived using sperm donated by Winston Churchill. That she sat over a fake coronation stone and that her, expect her acceptance speech backwards sounds like someone's making it up. Now, you're all going to dash away and play her speech backwards, aren't you? Well, I think you'll find that Hallett is the one making up all those claims about our present queen. Completely crazy. Surprise, surprise. But the living strength and majesty. And another quote here. Monty Python and the Holy Grail literally spells out Gregory Hallett, Holy Grail, give him Holy Grail 777. This translates as Gregory Hallett will represent the end times, a new age and times of the end and the shin, just as it happened. And yes, I did say shin. Okay, nope, I can't make sense of that one either. Then we have the claim that the Queen actually abdicated to Greg in 1981. Nope, I don't get that one either. And I won't even go into how the movies My Fair Lady, Roman Holiday, X-Men, The Wolverine, The Mummy and others all connect to Hallett and his claim. Lies, lies, fantasies, fairy tales and more lies. And why does he call himself John III, you might ask, seeing as England has only had one King John? Well, according to Hallett, Queen Victoria's eldest son by her first marriage, her marriage to blind Prince George of Cumberland, 
Do you remember that marriage? No, I don't either. Well, that son was Marcos Manuel, who was exiled to Portugal and who was made King of England as John II in 1869. So that really does clarify that, obviously. Well, no, it doesn't. Totally untrue. Now, I went and had a look at Hallett's Twitter account, and that's just as mad. But I did love a tweet from a man named Colin who declared Hallett the rightful heir of England, as in the animal, a bit like a rabbit but bigger, hare. That just about summed it up for me. It's all so very wacky and it left me wondering if this man is mad or whether he's just trying to make some money from his books. He's written a lot of books and his videos. Well, who knows? But I don't expect to see his coronation anytime soon. And I find it very sad that people are encouraging him in his pursuit of the, uh, the crown. But this is 2020, a year that nobody will forget. So we might as well have a madman trying to claim the throne of England as well, mightn't we? So I'm sorry for this rather tongue-in-cheek, sarcastic and perhaps irreverent uh, video um, in my questions about Anne Boleyn series, but this is actually, I'm just being bombarded with messages at the moment and it's actually really got to me now. So I just thought I'd address it. So no, Anne Boleyn didn't survive her execution. She didn't go on to have a child and then a grandson, Walter Raleigh, and nobody can claim the throne of England through her anyway. So there you go. No need to apologise, Claire. Um, that was a great breakdown of uh, his claims and their absurdity. Um, it was great to hear from an actual historian and authority on the uh, on Anne Boleyn's history and to comment from that perspective uh, on this matter. Please check out her channel. Uh, her name's Claire Ridgway again. Um, I'll leave a link to her channel below. Um, lots of interesting stuff uh, on Anne Boleyn on there. Um, guys, I hope you like this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and follow M, Seeker of Truth.